right, if you've been thinking about buying some land in the mountains of Northwest Arkansas, east or west uh, or south of uh, Fayetteville, then this video is for you. We're talking about all the pros and cons, some of the expenses of buying land up in the hills, 1,800, 2,000 feet above sea level, and what you can do with it and what you can't. Good afternoon, this is Ken Larson. This is our third episode for land in Arkansas, buying, developing, and selling. As you can see, I'm still wearing the same clothes because Brent is really trying to be the executive producer on here and doesn't respect the talent. So what we're gonna do now, uh, he wanted to just ask some questions and answers. I have things I need to do. As you saw, we set a fire up there, but if you can see that hill over there, as I discussed with my mini clover and clover, I try and get this down while we're doing this. You might actually remember me from our original reality show, uh, Flip This House While Drunk, Naked, and Afraid, which unfortunately was, Brent, why are you laughing? It's not funny. It was canceled abruptly. But unfortunately it was canceled, so we're gonna try and pick up what we left out on that, uh, what you do after you clear. We screwed up down there, we didn't get anything on the ground fast enough, and we're really trying to do it over here so we don't have to come back and fight the jungle, for lack of a better word, that will come back on you very quickly. Now we're gonna go over there and we're gonna do a little work planting clover and Brent can fire away on the questions. Don't worry, at least I will be clothed. <laughs> All right, we just got back from Mountainburg. We took the side-by-side -side downtown and ate at Pizza Den, really good spot. Thanks for lunch. And while it's still just barely past noon and before you get drunk, naked and afraid, flipping this property, I want to ask you some pros and cons, questions as you're spreading some seed, as you can hear me breathing heavily. So proximity, we're in Mountainburg, Chester area. What is close here for if somebody's going for a grocery store, a bite out, what is, uh, what's available to people? So Alma is the closest town. You have a Dollar General in town here, like you do everywhere else in these smaller towns. Uh, Alma has uh, two grocery stores, etc. Van Buren, Fort Smith, probably about 20 minutes. Fayetteville, as I mentioned, you're probably about 30 minutes. You're in between all of it. So, again, when I look at things, that was just one of my uh, parameters you're not right next to everything which I like you have privacy you're in the country you have all the things you need and you know if you live in a larger city it takes you 30 minutes to get anywhere these days so to me hopping on a highway that's not crowded is more than worth it to have what you have out here and absolutely stunning views on the way to Fort Fayetteville or Fort Fayetteville. So it's, a, it's a nice trade-off very steep hill as Brent rolls down here in a second yeah I'm walking down a hill backwards so it's kind of treacherous here so as far as you know we talked about proximity you know maybe if somebody's thinking about bringing their family up here to move um, schools are there even is there you know local schools here for there is school? a very good school system uh mountainburg isd in this area i think you can also choose to go to the alma isd i frankly don't remember how that works but i believe you have a choice of both of them uh mountainburg ISD is just down the mountain where we went and ate lunch at. And uh, it's really just a quaint little downtown, or well, downtown for lack of a better word, uh, that has, uh, you know, the basic things you need, schooling for the children, et cetera, several restaurants, and, you know, a lot of good people. It's, uh, I kind of have the best of both worlds. I live in the city and uh, down here, and I absolutely love it. It just uh, it depends on how you want to roll and, you know, what makes you tick. So, are there still deals to be had down here, or have you capitalized on all of them, Ken, because you're <laughs> so prolific down here? Uh, hey, you, go ahead. Is there, uh, are there still opportunities? Had I capitalized on all of them, I wouldn't be here with you today, I can tell you that. So, yeah, it's like anything. It's what you make of it, uh, this area. To an extent, I think at one time was undervalued, but that's the truth going around the entire country. And people are liking to get out a little bit and have some land, etc. But to give you an idea, and I, I hate using numbers, but uh, the land down here 
is going and, and that's predicated on how much you buy it's cheaper the more you buy is one thing the land itself etc but all things being equal you're probably looking at seven to ten thousand dollars down here for say five acres if you go 10 minutes north to West Fork which is literally 10 minutes from the campus is probably you I mean I'm thinking 15 to twenty thousand dollars been on the property maybe more so there is a lot of room for growth but you know the way I look at it it's not just pure profit uh, or I'd already sold that water tower back there it's doing something you enjoy doing and then you can get enjoyment out of it there is a business side to it there's no question about that and I've done extremely well but so much of it is there's nothing like doing something you enjoy you know and if you can make a little money at it fantastic but also like I said I plan on you know living here most of the time and it's just finding that happy medium for me which goes back to our first episode you know the method I'm using to throw this no what's the, what's the method I'm throwing it by hand Brent thanks for telling me that it goes back to that first uh, episode of know what your parameters are you know what works for you and staying true to that because it also can be a lot of work out here maintaining it and as I keep touching on I have a method for doing that I know what I like to do with, with land I own and I know how I like to maintain it now and uh, you know there's nothing like looking at your front door and having a family of deer out there grazing the you know 20 feet from you Brent and I drove down to go to lunch today and you're obviously in the summertime when you've got a little a lot of baby deer to use city terminology running around that we've seen probably three or four families of them ton of little fawns and it's just it's just getting back with nature and there's just nothing like being in these trees I don't personally hunt but some of the best hunting is I think is in this area as well uh, so whatever your recreational wants or needs some people just like privacy and they want to get out and get the heck away from everyone and not be bothered and do their own thing we also plan on putting a greenhouse on this property and getting into growing just because I like to plant and grow things if you can't tell you know vegetables etc and uh, there are blackberries that run all around the edge of this property there's a great little restaurant down in Chester that is kind of uh, their spiel is you know gathering natural foods etc and they literally pick blackberries in this area for some of their dishes and I know they do that with everything else I don't know the specifics on it but it's a great place to go check out right on front street right off the highway right off the highway really cool old building and uh so leads me to my next question is uh, you know a lot of this land up here is forested a lot of it's on a hillside you know i got a lot of people looking for homestead options you know maybe something with a water feature maybe something with 10 acres or so as far as having livestock you know a little bit of livestock a little bit of crops what are you seeing for this kind of you know this area for that kind of property i'm seeing a lot of what you just said uh you know and that's a debatable thing depending on who you talk to is how much land do you need for this or that a hobby farm 10 acres is probably more than enough uh, i will say it's extremely hard to get property here it doesn't come on the market very often and I don't believe it ever has um, and it's getting harder there uh, there's always something but uh, you know it's like everything these days it's getting more and more competitive and I think what you're gonna see I, w I personally hope this area stays as it is I don't want to see suburbs down here uh, you are close to national forest down here which is another thing that is just wonderful and uh there's several ohv being side by side four by four trails that actually the national forest maintains down here and with the park so you're always going to have that as far as nature and like i say just my personal opinion i'd prefer it to stay somewhat like it is i think the reality of it is it will develop 
as it already is. And, and this is going on in a lot of places in the country. It's just, you know, be a good steward, I guess, for lack of a better word. Plant clover. So there's just things to be aware of. And also be aware of uh, people are people everywhere. I've been lucky. I've lived all over the country and been all over the world. And that's something you learn. Uh, you come to this area. If you go to another area, you're in someone else's backyard. They're from there, et cetera, or they've been there longer. You know, it's like being a kid in school. You're trying to fit in, trying to meet people, respect their, I hate to say traditions, because we are, we're all Americans, but just the things they're used to. And don't try and cram your thoughts down their uh, head. And it goes both ways. And I think uh, that just makes for good neighbors, no matter where you're at.